Hello and welcome to the channel. Today we're continuing our series on the Expressway servers. Now in the last video we talked about how the logic in the Expressway is built using the local zone, subzones, uh, zones, and so forth. Uh, so now we're going to talk about the logic that's built into the Expressway that's needed in order to process calls. And this is something called the call processing order. Okay, and this is invoked the exact same way with every single call that goes into an expressway. And what's great about understanding and learning this uh, call processing order is that it makes troubleshooting calls that don't work much, much easier. So the first three things that are checked during the call processing order are called pre-search components. And they're called pre-search because uh, before the expressway ever searches for the alias that was dialed, it will check these three things. And uh, the reason it checks them pre-search is because all three of these components have the ability to change the alias from its originally dialed form. Okay, they are in order of how they're searched. They are transforms, call policy, uh, which is also called admin policy. It goes by both names. And uh, the third one is called user policy. And this one is also called by another name known as find me. Okay, then after it goes through pre-search, the next thing it searches is a zone search. So this would include uh, the local zone, subzones. Uh, it's looking for, uh, it's looking at membership rules, uh, what endpoints are registered, uh, and theref therefore uh, what bandwidth restrictions are being used and so forth. Okay, so the first zone that it searches is the local zone. And then if it can't find it in the local zone, it'll try to search external zones. Okay, so we talked about the default zone, but we didn't talk about some of the other zones uh, that exist, like the neighbor zone, traversal zones, uh, DNS zones, etc. So we have other zones that point external to the local zone. Then as long as the match is found, uh, the last thing that's checked in the call processing order is if there are any bandwidth restrictions. And that's the call processing order. Now this whole process gets uh, pretty intricate. So the only thing that we're gonna focus on here today is transforms under the pre-search components. Okay, so transforms. Uh, transforms do pretty much what they sound like. Uh, they take an alias of one type and change it into an alias of another type. And like many other things on the expressway, uh, transforms can be modified using an exact match, a prefix, a suffix, or regular expressions. But most commonly, transforms are modified using regular expressions because it allows you to get really granular with them. Also, transforms are searched by priority. Okay, so priorities are between 1 and 65,535, uh, 1 being the highest priority, and then uh, the larger the number, of course, the lower the priority. Okay, so uh, the most likely uh, or most common situation when you might want to use a transform is with interworking, uh, when you're calling between H323 and SIP. So let's say I have an expressway and I've got a couple of endpoints registered. Uh, these are both going to be uh, H323 endpoints. So the first one up here is registered with the alias 4001. And uh, this other one down here is registered with an alias of 4002. And then in this environment, let's say the administrators, uh, let's say they decided, you know what, we're going to get a couple of more endpoints uh, to add here. Uh, but they're going to be SIP endpoints. Uh, we're still going to keep these H323 endpoints, uh, but we're going to have both SIP and H323. So these SIP endpoints are going to register to the same expressway, but this time uh, SIP uses URIs. Uh, they don't use E164 aliases. Uh, but at the same time, we want to keep our dialing plan consistent. So uh, what we're going to do is uh, call this next endpoint 4003 at cisco.com. Okay. And then this other one up here is going to be 4004 at cisco.com. Okay, so this is our setup. So I'm going to go ahead and configure this on the expressway. And then after that, I'll come back and explain uh, what it all means. It, it gets kind of uh, complex, but you'll see in just a minute, doing it this way will make a lot more sense. Okay, so we're going to create a transform on the expressway. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here to configuration, dial plan, and then transform. Now, there's two different places that you can create transforms. You can create a pre-search transform, uh, which is what I'm about to show you right here. 
but you can also create what's called a transform in a search rule. So it's a search transform. And there's a difference between them. Uh, Pre-search transforms are applied pre-search, of course, be, uh, before the search. And when a pre-search transform is applied, uh, it can never be undone. So if it changes an alias, that alias is changed permanently, uh, at least for the duration of that call. Uh, and that's pre-search transforms. Okay, search transforms, on the other hand, are only changed for that one search. And if they aren't matched, then the alias reverts back to its previous state. Now, I know it's kind of hard to picture all of this and how it all fits together, but this is going to make uh, a lot more sense in just a minute after I configure it on the expressway and I show you back uh, in our diagram. Okay, let's go ahead and create a new transform here. And first notice that the priority defaults to one, uh, but I'm gonna change it so that there's some kind of increment here. Uh, it can be anything from one to 65,534. So you can change it to have an increment of um, say 10, or you can do 100, or, or whatever you want. Um, and, and that way, you would want to include an increment here uh, because that way if you ever want to go back and plug something in before it, uh, it's a lot easier to do. It, it prevents you from having to go back and change the numbering order of your other transforms. Uh, so we'll go ahead and for this one we'll make it uh, 100. And the description, uh, you don't have to put in a description here, but uh, we'll go ahead and call this one interworking transform, just so I can keep things straight. Okay, for this one, we're gonna go ahead and use uh, regular expressions. Now, we haven't talked about regular expressions yet, um, so just uh, try to follow me on this. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna start with open parentheses, and then square bracket, caret, at, then close the square bracket, asterisk, and close the parentheses. Okay, now what this says, uh, because I have the square bracket with the caret in there, that means uh, does not include. And then there is an at in there, and uh, that asterisk means uh, anything. So this regular expression basically says uh, anything that does not include an at, okay? And then what I'm gonna do uh, when I make that match, I'm gonna replace it with whatever is in the parentheses, backslash one, group one, whatever's in the parentheses, at cisco.com. So I'm just saying here that uh, anything that does not have a domain, uh, add this domain to the end of it, okay? Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, click Create Transform. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to Configuration, Dial Plan, and then Search Rules. And I'm gonna create a search transform that also changes an alias during a search. Now, notice that I already have one search rule here, and it's set with priority of 50, and it says any alias, uh, any alias that's matched. Uh, it will look for the local zone and see if it can find that alias, uh, any, any alias that's dialed. Okay, so uh, we're gonna, what we're going to do is add one more search rule in here. So we'll click New, and we're going to call this one um, Interworking SR for search rule. And we're going to give this one a priority of, say, 40. So it's a higher priority, but a lower number uh, than the previous search rule that I just mentioned. Okay, and the mode is going to be alias pattern match. And we're going to do a regular expression again. Uh, so this time we'll say uh, in parentheses uh, dot asterisk uh, anything at cisco forward slash dot com. Okay, and we're going to replace that with uh, just what's in the first set of parentheses. Okay, so to recap, we created a pre-search transform earlier that says anything that does not have a domain, add a domain to it. Now I'm creating this transform uh, during a search that says anything that does have a domain, strip it off so that there's no domain. Okay, now that might seem kind of strange, but it'll all make sense in just a minute. Okay, so our target zone is going to be the local zone, and then we'll go ahead and create that search rule. Okay, so let's go back to our diagram and talk about what these transforms do for us. So uh, let's say endpoint 1 over here at 4001 wants to call 4002. So it sends an admission request to the expressway that says, I want to call 4002, 
and the expressway will invoke the call processing order and the first thing it's going to check is the transforms and uh, there's a transform that says anything that does not have a domain add a domain so we're going to take that 4002 and change it to 4002 at cisco.com okay so then we get to our zone search and we search the local zone for 4002 at cisco.com now the first rule that we look at uh, because we gave it a priority of 40 remember uh, it says that anything that has a domain strip it so the first thing we're going to search for is 4002 by itself okay so then here of course the expressway will find a match and then the call can go through now you're probably wondering well why did we add a domain in the first place well we're going to see why in just a second okay so let's say uh, 4002 down here decides to dial 4003 so this user sends an admission request to the expressway and it says uh, i want to call 4003 and uh, the expressway invokes the call processing order and the first thing it checks are the transforms and there's a transform that says add anything that does not have a domain and add a domain so it takes 4003 and uh, changes it to 4003 at cisco.com okay and then it gets to our zone search and the first rule in our zone search says anything that has a domain strip it so it's going to strip this domain and it's going to search for just 4003 now would we find a match here uh, no because the endpoint is registered at 4003 at cisco.com so then because we didn't find a match the rule only applied it it only transformed the alias for that one search and because we didn't find a match the alias is going to revert back to its previous state and we do a new search with the other search rule that says any alias so then the expressway will do a search for 4003 at cisco.com and this time uh, we would find a match and then the call would go through now that may seem like a lot of trouble to go through but the important thing to understand and appreciate about all this is that uh, by going through the trouble of configuring the expressway and the transforms like this the user uh, does not have to change their dialing behavior. They don't have to dial in a different way. Uh, they just dialed 4003 like they normally would, and the call works the same as when they had only H323 endpoints. Okay, so uh, let's call from SIP to SIP. So let's say uh, the endpoint at 4003 wants to call the endpoint at 4004. Okay, so this time the message that's sent to the expressway is not an admission request it's an invite uh, because it's a it's a sip invite message okay and because this is a sip endpoint dialing uh, if they dialed 4004 the alias that's uh, going to go into the expressway is going to be 4004 at cisco.com because uh, the sip endpoint will automatically append the domain to the end of the alias dialed so it, it doesn't matter if they dialed the full uri or not uh, what goes into the expressway is 4004 at cisco.com now the expressway is going to uh, once again invoke the call processing order so there's a transform that says anything that does not have a domain add a domain uh, but this alias already has a domain so the transform would not apply uh, it'll say not transformed okay so then it goes on and it works its way to the zone searches and then when it gets to the local zone the first thing it's going to come across is a search rule that says anything that has a domain strip it and uh, then it's just going to search for just the first part of the alias and so it's going to search for 4004 and of course uh, it will not find a match and uh, then it goes to the next search rule uh, which will apply the full alias as it was originally dialed which was 4004 at cisco.com and this time we find a match and the call goes through okay now let's bring this full circle and call from a sip endpoint uh, 4004 to an h323 endpoint 4001 so the endpoint is going to uh, send an invite message to the expressway and it dials 4001 at cisco.com okay so the the expressway is going to invoke the call processing order once again and the first thing it does is it looks at the transforms uh, but to, it does not transform because the alias already has a domain on the end so then it goes over to the search rules and the first search rule says that anything that has a domain strip the domain off so it strips off the domain and then it searches for just 4001 and then of course in this case it's going to find a match and the call will go through 
Okay, so by creating a pre-search transform and a zone search transform and using the default rule that already exists, you can create full dialing behaviors between any H323 or SIP endpoint without uh, any change in how the users dial out to other endpoints. Okay, so that'll uh, just about do it for transforms. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.